students this is lecture for week 13 and the and this is lecture 2 friday 25th of june 2021 so this uh, this is topic 10 uh, in the previous in the previous lecture i have covered everything related to topic 9 uh, and then uh, uh, i have provided at least two videos i think or two or three videos uh, related to that topic and also uh, i have i want to let you know that uh, i'm uh, i am focusing on finishing the lecture first so i hope we can finish the lecture first as soon as possible and then after that i will share with you uh, uh, exercise questions sample exam questions etc so that uh, it can help you uh, to prepare for the final exam the most important thing is uh, we have to finish the lecture first and after that we can do something else okay so this is topic 10 uh, the title of the topic is capital capital budgeting or investment analysis so there are several things that will be covered in this topic capital budgeting and decision making definition of capital budgeting capital budgeting methods okay okay these are the two main things that to be covered in this topic the first one is explain about the nature and importance of capital investment analysis and the second thing is uh, you will learn uh, several methods that can be used to do the capital investment uh, capital budgeting analysis okay okay capital investment analysis or capital budgeting analysis so what is capital investment Capital investment or capital budgeting is the process by which management plans, evaluates and control investment in fixed asset. So capital investment analysis is the process by which a manager uh, by which a manager trying to find the best investment for for its department or for his or her department or for his or her business so the thing is like this uh, let's say in the future you are a manager uh, and then uh, in many times you have to invest in purchasing fixed asset for example you have to purchase an equipment uh, for your uh, business uh, with that equipment your business can produce more or can produce higher quality products uh, or cheaper product etc so in that situation you have to do capital investment analysis or capital budgeting the capital budgeting uh, capital uh, capital investment analysis or capital budgeting is the process uh, where you choose the best equipment for your business uh, if you uh, have to purchase an equipment for your business the most of the time you have many choices uh, that uh, the equipment brand a brand b brand c brand d maybe you have four choices you want to purchase an equipment but you have four choices same equipment but different brand and as a manager for a business you have to choose the best one uh, the process to choose the best one is called capital investment analysis or capital budgeting you will learn about the process or methods in this uh, topic okay uh, like i said in the previous slide uh, capital investment 
uh, analysis uh, relates to the purchase of fixed asset. Sometimes it relates to the uh, uh, things like you you are a manager in a business, you have several projects, and then you want to to start a new project. You have to choose one only. You have several projects, what? But you have to choose one only. So the process to choose the best project or investment for your business is called the capital uh, investment analysis or capital budgeting so most of the time these things are related to fixed asset or long term asset okay uh, capital investment analysis nature of capital investment analysis capital investment analysis is like doing something uh, to choose uh, which fixed asset is the best for your business so these are four factors that are related to capital investment analysis the first one is management plans evaluates and controls investment in fixed asset so the first factor says if you are a manager you are responsible to plan to evaluate and control investment in fixed Asset. Uh, as a manager, you have to plan uh, how many uh, dollar uh, you want you want to spend on uh, purchasing fixed asset this year. Uh, you have to plan. You have to prepare budget for that. Okay, this you are a manager in a business, so you you think that the, this year you want to spend two hundred thousand dollar for capital investment or for purchasing fixed uh, asset. Uh, this year that is your responsibility and also you have uh, you are as a manager manager you are responsible to evaluate the investment uh, as a manager you also have to uh, to choose to know how to choose the best investment for your business or department and also to control the investment in the in fixed asset also as a manager you have to to do controlling activities after your business ha has done uh, one uh, capital investment or after your business has purchased fixed asset you have to do controlling activities you have to compare the budget uh, the to check whether the investment is a, is actually a good investment or not whether the, the investment uh, provide returns uh, good return to your business or not so that is controlling to, to check whether the investment is good or not if it is not good then you have to do uh, correction activities if it is good then it is good uh, that, is, uh, that is good for the business second factor that you have to aware when when uh, if you are a manager Second factor that you have to wear uh, about in capital investment is capital investment involves a long term commitment of funds. Okay, capital investment is related to the purchase of fixed asset. So you have to wear that fixed asset. Fixed assets are more uh, are mostly very expensive. Uh, if a business uh, purchases a fixed asset, most of the time the business will pay for the pick, uh, for the fixed asset for many many years because it is very expensive. So, if you are a manager, you have to aware about that facts. When your business purchases a fixed asset, it involves a long term commitment. Your business will have to pay for the fixed asset for many many years. So it is. Uh, if you are a manager, then you. When you aware about these facts, then you have, uh, you know. Uh, when you want to make a decision about purchasing fixed asset, then you have to very to be very careful. Make sure you purchase a good fixed asset. A fixed asset then uh, that that can provide return for your business. 
Number three, factor three that uh, you have to worry about about capital investment analysis is investments must earn a reasonable rate of return. Uh, the thing is like this: if you are a manager, if you want to purchase a fixed asset, you have to purchase fixed asset. Then that can uh, provide a return in term of revenue or in term of cost saving for your business and the return must be a reasonable rate of return uh, you if you have a if you are a manager you cannot just spend money on purchasing fixed asset uh, but you have to spend money for purchasing fixed asset that can provide return for your business that can generate re- more revenue for your business or that can uh, causes uh, cost saving for your business and the return must be good return it if the return is very small then it is not good yet it's, it is not good if the return is like three percent increase in profit uh, or two percent decrease in cost saving that is maybe not, not very good because if 3%, 2%, you can get that kind of return if you put your cash in the bank. Fixed deposit. Fixed deposit will pay you 2%, 3%, maybe 4%. Uh, but you, when you are a manager, you want to purchase fixed asset, make sure you have a reasonable rate of return. Maybe more than 10%. Uh, most of the time, more than 10%. Maybe 15%, 20% then that is a good investment if the return is small then that is still not a good investment factor number four the program should include a plan for encouraging and rewarding employees for submitting proposal if you are a manager in a big company there are many employees you as a manager may not know what is the really important fixed asset that has to be purchased so the thing that they do in big businesses is they encourage employees to propose uh, the purchase of equipment or mod, uh, or anything most of the time equipment uh, the employees is encouraged to propose the purchase of equipment uh, related to their uh, their work so if you have thousands of workers it is, this is very useful the workers will will propose uh, they want this machine, they want this machine, they want this machine. You are, as a manager have to do something to, to try to choose the best uh, fixed asset to purchase. Uh, the employees only can propose. But you as a manager is responsible to choose the best machine for your, your business or your department. So if you are a manager, you... Uh, you should uh, do this factor for the program should include plan for encouraging and rewarding employees for submitting proposal you have to encourage employees uh, and reward employees if they can propose uh, fixed asset uh, that is good for you for the business or department they know more employees they work in the assembly of the product. They know uh, what are the, the, the machine or equipment that is important for them. That is an example. Uh, capital investment also related to the purchase of other fixed asset other than equipment like building, motor vehicle, uh, maybe land also. So the uh, capital investment is used for things like that to purchase the fixed asset to choose the best fixed asset for a business okay there are several methods that can be used to do the capital investment analysis and in this course you will learn three methods the first one is average rate of return the second one is Okay, the first one is average rate of return method. The second one is cash payback method. And the third one is net present value method. The internal rate of return method, uh, you don't have to worry about that. 
in this course you have to know only three methods only okay these are the three methods uh, there are four here but you have to know only three so the average rate of return method and the cash payback method are called methods that ignore present values i will explain about present values later Pre present values is related to interest rate to, and it is related to time value of money uh, the the third method that you have to learn called the net present value method is the method that use present value okay or the method that consider time value of money you will see that okay we will see the method one by one okay this is like uh, data from survey businesses out there when when somebody did a survey uh, in us many many years ago uh, they found that businesses out there uh, uses these four methods to do capital investment analysis and 85 percent businesses said they use net present value so the net present value method is very popular uh, 53 percent said they use cash payback method and and 15 percent uh, companies said that they use uh, average rate of return method and then the internal rate of return method is 76 percent so see here the most popular method uh, or widely used method is the net present value method okay see the average rate of return method okay i will show you the way to do to use the method first and then after that i will explain about the advantages and disadvantages okay this is the way to do the average rate of return method okay let's see let's see this is an example uh, there is a manager and then the manager receive a proposal or a manager has an opportunity to to do this uh, the thing is uh, Uh, the manager can purchase a machine and that machine costs $500,000. It is expected that the machine can be used for 5 years. Residual value is 0. Expected total income is 200000 So, uh, the residual value is none. Residual value is like this. Residual value is the value of the machine at the end of the useful life. Yeah. Uh, the example is like this. Let's say you you purchase a computer. Uh, and then you think that your computer can be used for 4 years. At the end of 4 years, you can sell the computer as a second hand item. Maybe $100, $200. So that is residual value. For this machine... Uh, the cost is $500, $500,000, the uh, expected useful life is 4 years, but uh, it is expected that the residual value is zero. It means that at the end of year 4, uh, the machine has no value, uh, has to be disposed. Uh, expected total income means expected uh, total profit that can be generated using the machine okay if this is the project or potential investment then how to analyze analyze this uh, this uh, capital investment using average rate of return so using average rate of return you have to use this formula average rate of return equal to estimated average annual income and average investment okay Remember this formula. This uh, this formula you have to memorize this formula. Okay, and then the how to calculate the estimated average annual income. The estimated average annual income is see here the expected total income two hundred thousand divided by four years because that is the average 
sorry that is the average rate of return for every year okay that is how to calculate the estimated average annual income and the denominator below uh, the the below the line here uh, average investment okay how to calculate average investment remember this average investment investment the way to calculate it is the fixed asset cost in this example the machine cost plus the residual value uh, in this uh, sample question uh, there is no uh, residual value so zero residual value and then you have to divide everything by two and that is the way to calculate the average investment so for this example uh, the average rate of return for this machine is 20 percent so uh, when you use the average rate of return method the higher the average rate of return the better the investment let's say you have you are a manager and then at one time you have two choices uh, to purchase machine brand a or machine brand b machine brand a the average rate of return is 20 percent machine brand b the average rate of return is 23 percent so which machine is better to purchase uh, you better purchase the machine brand b because the machine brand b has higher average rate of return uh, that is how to use this method you analyze the the capital investment and then you find the highest rate of return okay this is another another example related to average rate of return uh, let's say you are a manager and then you receive two proposal uh, to purchase fixed asset proposal a and b proposal a the estimated average annual income is thirty thousand average investment is uh, 120,000 proposal B the average annual income is 36,000 and the average investment is 180,000 uh, if you see this uh, proposal if you do not do analysis then you will say that proposal B is better because uh, proposal B has higher average annual income. Uh, proposal B will generate more profit for the business. And that is your, uh, that is our uh, decision. If we do not do the analysis, but let's see, we do the average rate of return analysis. Remember the formula: average rate of return analysis equal to average annual income. Uh, related to the purchase of fixed asset divided by average investment so if you calculate uh, if you calculate the average rate of return for proposal a you will see that the the rate of average rate of return is 25 percent 30,000 divided by 120,000 but if you calculate uh, average rate of return for proposal b you will see that the rate is uh, 20% only 36,000 divided by 180,000 so now after doing the analysis which uh, proposal is the best proposal A or B so like I said earlier the best choice is uh, investment with highest uh, rate of return okay so in this uh, example proposal A is better compared to B Okay, this is another example. Determine the rate of return for a project that is estimated to yield net income of total income of $273,600 over 3 years, cost $690,000 and has a $70,000 residual value. So, um, use the formula average rate of return equal to 
average annual income divided by average investment. So what is the average annual income? Average annual income is uh, total income two hundred and seventy three thousand dollar. Sorry, two hundred and seventy three thousand six hundred dollar divided by the useful life three years. So average annual income is ninety one thousand two hundred. Average investment is remember the formula. Average investment is the initial investment or cost six hundred and ninety thousand in this sample question plus the residual value mm -hmm. residual value is seventy thousand and then you divide the num the two numbers by two so here the the average investment is three hundred and eighty thousand so average rate of return for this investment is nine uh, twenty four percent Okay, that is the way to to do the calculation. Okay, I have, I have you have seen how to calculate the or how to use uh, average rate of return method. So, after you have seen the way to calculate the average rate of return method, now you can see what are the advantages of this method. The first advantage is. This method is easy to calculate. Uh, you just have to remember the formula, then you can calculate the average rate of return method. Number two, the advantage is uh, it considers accounting income. So this method, this average rate of return method uses uh, net income or net profit uh, data in the calculation. So the calculation is based on net income. The higher the net income from the investment uh, or fixed asset, the higher the average rate of return. So that is good because most of the time, uh, income or profit is used to evaluate a department or a manager. But this method has two disadvantages at least. The first one is it ignores cash flow. Uh, you know that if you have a, a business, cash flow is very important. This method focuses on profit, but it ignores cash flow, cash in and cash out. How many cash can goes in? How many cash has to goes out when you choose this uh, investment? The second uh, disadvantage is it ignores the time value of money. Time value of money is related to the value of your cash uh, in different times. Uh, $1,000 now is more valuable than $1,000 in the next two years, isn't it? That is the that is the the, uh, the 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 basic related to time value of money. You have to know that the cash that you have now is more valuable compared to the same amount of cash uh, in next one year or next two years or next 10 years. So that concept is called time value of money. Okay, we see the second method. Okay, the second method that can be used to do investment analysis or capital investment analysis is uh, is cash payback method see here the expected period of time that will pass between the date of an investment and the complete recovery in cash or equivalent of the amount invested is the cash payback period The excess of cash flowing in uh, from revenue over the cash flowing out for expenses is termed as the net cash flow. Net cash flow is uh, cash in minus cash out. When you make an investment or when you purchase a fixed asset, there will be cash out. Particularly when you have to when you purchase the fixed asset, you have to pay one hundred thousand dollar or $200,000 or $20,000 so that is the cash out 
And after that, when you use the machine, the machine maybe can generate, uh, can produce product. Product. Then when you sell the product, there will be cash in. Uh, so every investment has uh, cash out and also has uh, cash in. Sometimes there is no as uh, no physical cash in or uh, cash in. Maybe you purchase a machine, but the thing is you have you can save cost uh, before do, uh, using the machine uh, the labor cost is $200,000 per year now after you have the machine the labor cost can re be reduced by uh, $50,000 after the uh, you have the machine the labor cost is only $150,000 so that is there is no physical cash in but the cost saving is $50,000 so that is also cash in uh, can be considered as cash in so it, you can uh, add that amount in the analysis of uh, cash payback okay so let's see let's see how to use the cash payback method let's see you are a manager and then at one time you have this uh, opportunity to purchase a uh, fixed asset uh, the price of the fixed asset or the investment cost is 200,000 and it is expected that uh, annual net cash flow is 40,000 every year the machine can generate 40,000 cash net cash so if you want to analyze whether this investment is a good or not using cash payback period then you have to use this formula uh, cash payback period equal to total investment divided by by annual net cash flow so the total investment is 200,000 annual net cash flow is 40,000 so the cash payback period is 5 years the cash payback period is uh, how long the business will get back the amount that they have invested in this example if the business invested $200,000 to purchase the, cap, the equipment or something the business will get back the their investment $200,000 in 5 years so for if you use a uh, cash payback period the the shorter the payback the payback period the shorter the payback period the better the investment Let's say you have two choices to invest or to purchase machine A or machine B. Machine A, the cash payback period is four years. Machine B, the cash payback period is five years. So which machine is better to purchase? Uh, machine A is better because the payback period is shorter, four years only. The, your business will get back your investment in four years. Machine B takes five years. So. Uh, a is better compared to B. Okay, you use the formula that you have seen in the previous slide if uh, the net cash flow every year is same. But if the net cash flow uh, every year uh, is not same, then you have to use uh, a table like this. Let's see. Let's say there is uh, an investment. Uh, the investment uh, is 400,000. And then the net cash flow is, is not same every year. So see here in year one in the table in this slide. See here in the net cash flow is like this. Year 1, the net cash flow is 60,000. Year 2, 80,000. Year 3, 105,000. Year 4, 155,000. So, if the net cash flow net cash flow is not same every year, then you can use the formula that you have seen in the previous slide. You have to use this table. You have to, to create this table. You have to show what is the net cash flow every year. And then, in the next column in column number three here you calculate the 
cumulative net cash flow. Year one, net cash flow sixty thousand. Cumulative net cash flow is also sixty thousand. Year two, the net cash flow is eighty thousand. The cumulative net cash flow is sixty thousand plus eighty thousand equal to one hundred and forty thousand. In year three, uh, the net cash flow is one hundred and five thousand. The cumulative net cash flow is one hundred forty thousand plus one hundred and five thousand equal to two hundred and forty five thousand. In year four, the net cash flow is one hundred and fifty five thousand, and the cumulative net cash flow is two hundred and forty five thousand plus one five five thousand equal to four hundred thousand. Then you know, using this uh, table, you will know that the cash payback period is in year four. Okay. So this is the way to do that and there is a graph here hopefully you can see it clearly okay let's see uh, this payback period uh, method has uh, several advantages and also several disadvantages the first advantage is con it considers cash flow So remember the average rate of return method, it considers uh, net income or profit. But this method considers of or use cash flow uh, when you do the analysis. So this method is also good because if you have a business, cash flow, cash flow is very important. Uh, the next advantage is it shows when funds are available for reinvestment. Uh, so if you use cash payback period method, uh, if the investment will achieve payback period in four years, you know after four years, your business has sufficient cash uh, to do or to make other investment or to purchase, uh, to purchase other fixed asset. That is good. But this method has at least two disadvantages. First, it ignores cash flow occurring after the payback period. Uh, you see that this method only focusing on the cash flow before the cash payback period only. After the cash payback period, maybe the, the machine can generate more cash after that. But that cash generated after the payback period uh, are not considered in the calculation of this method. That is not good. Uh, second disadvantage is does not use present value concept in valuing cash flow occurring in different periods. Like I said earlier, uh, time value of money or present value concept is very important. Uh, the logic is like like the uh, the thing that I have mentioned earlier. If you have ten uh, ten uh, sorry one thousand dollar now, it is more valuable. Compared to if you have one thousand uh, dollar in next year or next two years or next ten years. Okay, the, this is an uh, an example. A project has estimated annual net cash flows of thirty thousand. It is estimated to cost one hundred and five thousand. Determine the cash payback period. So this is easy. Uh, annual net cash flow 30,000 so every year 30,000 same so you can use the formula the formula is 105,000 divided by 30,000 so you know that the cash payback period is 3.5 years or 3 years and and a half okay that's all for lecture today next week I will cover uh, another method which is called the net present value method and after that we have finished all the lecture and then we can do sample question etc thank you very much do not forget to write your name and metric number in the comment section that is your that is your lecture attendance for today thank you